numbers. It's your authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me at the scriptures we're going to be looking at today. Read along with me word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be considering today. Read along with me. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me because the mouth will go quicker than the brain. So don't just sit there passively. Uh, this is not for your entertainment. Okay? Let's look at some stuff in scripture today. Okay, we got a lot that we're going to be going through. So let's not dilly dally. First Peter chapter two, verses nineteen and twenty. Two verses to start. <clears throat> for this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Now what is this talking about? This is talking about getting persecuted by the world in one way or another for doing the right thing according to God and His Word. Psalm 35, one verse. Psalm 35, just one verse in Psalm 35. Verse 13. Psalm 35, verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. And Psalm 109, verses 1 on to verse 5. Psalm 109, verses 1 on to verse 5. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the, de of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. They have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Now see, what Christianity in the world tells you love is, is totally different than what Scripture tells you what love is. Love is truth. Love is truth personified. Love is truth in action, in word, in deed in reality okay all right but love in the world to the world and true christianity is only a feeling very dangerous this love that the world and christianity offers you but the love that comes from saints telling the truth truth is love and love is truth Back to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye take it patiently? But if when ye do well, ye suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Okay? Leviticus 26 Leviticus 26, 40, on to verse 42. We're seeing two aspects here. We're seeing a suffering that comes from doing it God's way, and also a suffering from going contrary to God's way and going your own in a way. Leviticus 26, verses 40 on to verse 42. Beg your pardon. Leviticus 26, verses 40 on to verse 42. Different dispensation, but instruction in righteousness. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, 
with their trespass which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me. And that I and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity. And see, Christianity tells you today that God loves you unconditionally, which is not true. Okay, uh, if you come to Him on His terms and He saves you, okay, yes, that's there. But uh, you reject the gospel and boot the door and try to climb up some other way. Um, you reject the gospel. God's wrath is for you. God does not love you unconditionally. God does not love the Christ-rejecting sinner. That is a lie. Okay? We have a God who gets angry. We have a God who will let his wrath out during the time of Jacob's trouble. One second, please. Yes, we have a God who gets angry. And Christianity will tell you that God's not angry at you. God's not angry at you today. Uh, he's angry at you. He's angry at the wicked every day. Okay? No, that has not changed. All right? That, all right? Let's, let's read verse 41 again. And that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humble, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. Dispensational difference there showing you about what that's talking about dispensationally, but for our instruction in righteousness, uh, also... The beloved Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Oh, we're reading on to verse 11. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I call... Answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and am a, and am as a I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day. It's like you can't get you can't get any respite. And they that are mad against me, mad denoting insanity, are sworn against me. Like the Jesuits, they're sworn against uh, the uh, Church of the Living God, the saints, the body of Christ. For I, have, for I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of thine indignation and thy wrath. Well, that's the God of the Old Testament. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. What has changed? The way that God deals with man is what has changed, okay? God himself has not changed, okay? God does not change, okay? You reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay, one time. You are God's enemy. God's wrath is for you, okay? But see, what we're talking about today is... When you do things God's way and then you suffer for it, that's right in his eyes. That's good. And you will receive a reward of some sort. But when you decide to buck against what God has told us to do for us today, 
and decide to go against against what he says and do it your own way. Okay, these are two things to consider when we are talking about this specific topic. Because of thine indignation and thy wrath, for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. And then, of course, in verse 12, the shift in Psalm 102. Depression. Depression. Because when you look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 and 20 again, for this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. You're doing things God's way. You're, you're, you're abiding in Him, in the Scriptures, and you're, you're seeking to live your life according to the Scriptures. Okay? But yet you're suffering for it. You're suffering from a society and from a world that is against God that calls evil good and good evil. Okay? For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your, for your faults, ye take it patiently? Oh, I messed up. I'm reaping what I've sown. So I'm going to accept the punishment of my iniquity. Just go with it. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it pa patiently, this is acceptable with God. Now, there are some variations that you can throw into the mix of this. But today I want to talk to you about depression. Depression. First and foremost, the word depression itself is not found in Scripture. Okay? It is not found in Scripture. Uh, we see so, uh, things that kind of gravitate to what is known as depression... But the word depression itself, or even depress, is not found in Scripture. What does Mr. Webster tell us about this condition? This depression. Now right away, right away, right away, you're going to notice some stuff. And this is where... This is where we're going to gravitate onto in Scripture. Okay? From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Depress. To press down. The weight of the world on your shoulders. To press to a lower state or position as to depress the end of a tube or the muzzle of a gun, to let fall, to bring down, as to depress the eye, to, run, to render dull or languid, very good word, I like that word, or limit or diminish, as to depress commerce, to sink, to lower, to deject, to make sad, as to depress the spirits or the mind, to humble, to abase, as to depress pride, to sink in altitude, to cause to appear lower or nearer to nearer the horizon, as a man sailing towards the equator depresses the pole. To impoverish, to impoverish, to lower in temporal estate as misfortunes and losses have depressed the merchants. To lower in value as to depress the price of stock. And then we have depressed. Pressed or forced down. Forced down. 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 
Remember that. Hinge the word down. Pressed or forced down. Lowered. Dejected. Dispirited. Sad. Humbled. Sunk. Rendered. Languid. In, bata in botany, a depressed leaf is hollow in the middle, or having the disc more, or having the disc more depressed than the sides, used of succulent leaves, and opposed to convert, whatever. Now we're going to be skipping depressing, but we're going to look at depression. The act of pressing down, or the state of being pressed down, a low state. A hollow, a sinking or failing, falling in of a surface, or a forcing inwards, as rotten as roughness, consisting in little prot protuberance and depressions, the depression of the skull, the act of humbling, abasement, as the depression of pride, the depression of the, of the nobility, a sinking of the spirits, dejection, a state of sadness, want of courage or animation, as depression of the mind, a low state of strength, a state of body, Succeeding debility in the formation of disease, dis-ease, dis-ease. <clears throat> A low state of business or of poverty, the sinking of the polar star towards the horizon as a person recedes from the pole towards the equator, also the distance of a star from the horizon below, which is measured by an arc of the ver vertical circle, or whatever, there's a glitch there, passing through the star, in, in, intercepted between the star and the horizon. In algebra, the depression of an equation is the bringing of it into a lower or more simple terms by division. So, <clears throat> Depression, depressed, depressed, down, down, down. Amos chapter 2, Amos chapter 2. Verses 9 to the close. Amos 2. Nine to the close. That's to verse 16. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. Also I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you forty years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. And I raised up of your sons for prophets, and of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink, which the Nazarite is not supposed to do, and commanded the prophets, saying, Prophesy not. So this is talking about when someone... For our instruction and in righteousness, when you as a saint come into the equation of whatever it is, being a representative, an ambassador of Christ, a representative of the truth, and having the truth, sanctify them through thy, wor uh, thy truth, thy word is truth, you can be depressed, put down. Hmm. Behold, verse 13, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. 
Hmm. Now roll that around in your head for a little bit. That our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is saying here in Amos chapter 2, verse 13. Behold, I am pressed under you. As a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. Therefore, the flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Neither shall he stand that handleth the bow. And he that is swift of foot shall not deliver himself. Neither shall he that rideth the horse deliver himself. And he that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, saith the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 3 on to verse 11. Now, we saw that example in Amos chapter 2. Let's see a contrast to that. Because what we saw in Amos chapter 2 there is exactly what is happening today. You have today for our instruction and in righteousness out of Amos chapter 2, you have we the saint being an ambassador for Christ in a world that doesn't want to hear it, that calls evil good and good evil. Okay? But here's a contrast to that. Blessed be God, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 on to verse 11. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. And what are we reading to? Verse 11. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence, the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, <laughs> that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Where in Amos chapter 2, we saw that the Lord uses the thing that he was pressed down. By what? By people who don't want to hear the truth, that reject the truth, who say to the prophets, don't prophesy to us. And because people, especially today, they don't want to hear that. But see, the contrast here. In 2 Corinthians, Paul and the apostles, we are doing, those of us saints, who are doing the will of the Lord, living our lives in accordance with the scripture, but yet being pressed down. Depressed. And I got to tell you, it can get quite wearisome. It can get quite wearisome. Now, like I said, the word depress, depression, being down, the word depress is not found in Scripture. But we find trodden down and cast down. Hmm. Personally, the past 
a week or so, um, what is known called depression in modern terms. Been going through some myself. And there are many of you brethren, sisters out there, who are trodden down, cast down. Incidentally, you want to say downtrodden, right? Hello. It's like, well, I'm downtrodden. Find me down. Find me. And brother, here's your challenge for today. You'll, you'll see this. I must have missed it. Find down trodden. Look for it. Look really hard. Down trodden. I say it myself. I've said it. Well, down trodden. It's trodden down. You don't find down trodden in Scripture. At least I didn't find it yet. Okay, and I looked. If I've missed it, point it out to me in the, in the comment section with the Scripture. If I've missed it, please. Trodden down. I've been feeling myself trodden down recently. And cast down. Trodden down. Judges, chapter 5. Judges, chapter 5. Verses 19 on to verse 23. We have a lot of scripture we're going through today, so, just so you know, so we're kind of, we're letting the, we're letting scripture speak today. Judges 5, verses 19 on to verse 23. This is the song, by the way, of Deborah and Barak. The kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the river, by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away. That ancient river, the river Kishon, or Kishon. O my, oh my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Trodden down. Then were the horse hoofs broken by the means of the pranzings, the pranzings of their mighty ones. Curse ye Meraz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to help because they came not to the help of the Lord to help to the help of the Lord on against ah beg your pardon. Curse ye Meros, Meros, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Trodden down, verse 21. You, you search this out yourself. That's the first appearance of trodden down. Not of the word trodden or even of down. Compacted, trodden down. Hmm, interesting. And you know what comes to mind immediately, at least I did for myself, Ezekiel 34. This trodden down, this this came to my mind immediately while we were doing this. <clears throat> Ezekiel 34. Trodden down. Verses 1 on to verse 6. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus sat the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? 
How many of these Christians are all in it for themselves? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe ye with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Verses 15 on to verse 19. Then. Skipping. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, sat the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away. And will bind up that which was broken. And will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. <clears throat> Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. And to have drunk of the deep waters. But ye must foul the residue with your feet. Trodden down. Walked over. Pressed down. Hmm. Like a cart full of sheaves. And as for my flock... They have eaten, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. And of course, you can tie that directly into the Bibles that are being produced by Rome, by this satanic Christianity that is being offered unto you. Absolutely. Psalm 119. Samach. Psalm 119, Samach. But you don't know what that is, huh? You don't know what Samech is in Psalm 119? Why not? Why not? I'm not going to tell you the verse numbers. You find it. Psalm 119, Samech. Okay, I'll tell you the verse numbers. Verses 113 on to verse 20. Learn Psalm 119 by the heading of the eight verses that comprise the breaking up of Psalm 119, okay? Anyway. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Where do you get God's law? You get it from the Scripture. See, Psalm 119 is all about uplifting and validating the Scripture. Okay? Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. When you're trodden down, when you're cast down, dear brother, dear sister. See, world, when you're trodden down, when you're cast down, the world wants you to go here. Satan wants you to go to something, wants to distract you. But when you're, when you're trodden down and cast down, i.e. what is known as depressed, where do you go? Verse 115. Depart from me, ye evildoers. I will keep the commandments of my God, and I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of those that turn aside and will not cleave unto me. <laughs> Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live. Let me not be ashamed of my hope. And who, and, and who is our hope? Hold thou me up, 
and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes. For their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love thy testimonies. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. That's why during the time of Jacob's trouble there are those out there who say, well the scriptures won't be available. Yes it will be. You just got to remember that the body of Christ is not on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. And eternal security, that permanent seal is not there except for the 144,000 Jews. Watch out for people who tell you during the time of Jacob's trouble that the uh, scriptures isn't going to be around. It will be. Okay? Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes, for their dis deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. And I am afraid of thy judgments. Which is why a lot of you don't like to search the scriptures. Which is why a lot of you will go to a Bible. Something that perverts the scripture. Something that's euphemistic in its process. And look, uh, look across the way uh, in your scriptures to Mem. The last verse in Mem. Through thy precepts I get understanding, departing from evil. Therefore I hate every false way. I hate Roman Catholicism. I hate easy believism. Okay? I hate... Calvinism. Okay? And you know what? You know what? I hate Christianity. Oh! Go away with that. Go away. I hate Christianity. Because what is Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. It is not the way. In Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Trodden down. Isaiah 5, verses 1 on to verse 7. We're, we're letting Scripture do a lot of the talking here today. Which is the way it should be. Isaiah 5, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. He fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, Judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Think about that. Judge betwixt the Lord, the one who is presented to you in his perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, the authorized version, with the vineyard of Christianity, as it were. Which one, which one measures up? What could, I, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. You know, you, the Lord has a specific way to where he will save you. You have to come to him his way, the way of the cross, which is death to yourself first, which is why no one likes it. He, you come to him his way and he saves you. He seals you with himself. He gives you his word. What else do you need? 
having food and raiment. Food, the word of God, raiment. The covering of himself within you. What more do you need? All this is a luxury. What more could he have done? And see, if he does like live for you, apart from you making choice, then you're a robot. God don't want a robot. And now go to. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Did we see that again? Trodden down. We're going to be looking at the appearances of trodden down in Scripture, obviously. So, consider what we have read so far. And mull it around in your head for a little while. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged. But there shall come up briars and thorns. Oh boy. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment. But behold, oppression for righteousness but behold a cry. Now consider this. Consider this. You go contrary to what the Lord wants. Okay? He removes that hedge. And briars and thorns get in the way and choke the word. And it become unfruitful. Unfruitful. Not because... The word is unfruitful in and of itself, but you got to remember, things are not done by gunpoint, by force. God is not going to, God doesn't coerce you into anything. Neither does the devil. Isaiah 18. Isaiah 18. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that send ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the water, saying, Go ye swift messengers, to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down, whose land the rivers have spoiled. Hmm. Now, in this example, waters, rivers, likened unto types of people. All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye when he lifteth up an ensign on the mountains, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. For so the Lord said unto me, I will take my rest. And I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For for the harvest, when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountain and to the beasts of the earth, and the fowls shall summer upon them, and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. In that time shall they, in that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled, and from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden underfoot. Hmm. Then we see that reference of uh, trodden underfoot. Hmm. Being walked over. Whose land the rivers have spoiled. 
to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. Hmm. Isaiah 25. Isaiah 25, verses 9 on to verse 12. Isaiah 25, verses 9 on to verse 12. 9 on to the close, I should say. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. Amen. Alleluia. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him. And we'll see trodden down again. Even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill, and he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim. And he shall bring down their pride together with spoils of their hand, with the spoils of their hands. And the forest of the high fort of thy wall shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground even to the dust. Hmm. Look at that where it says about Moab. Verse 10. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. There we see trodden down mentioned twice. Twice mentioned. Okay? Isaiah 16, verses 6 and 7. Check this out. Moab. And what's the significance of Moab? Moab, those were the children of Lot. One of the children of Lot was Moab. Moab, the children of Lot, brought about by that incestuous thing. Isaiah 16, verses 6 and 7. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud. Even of his haughtiness and his pride and his wrath but his lie shall not be so. Therefore shall Moab howl for Moab. Everyone shall howl. For the foundations of Kir Harasheth shall ye mourn. Surely they are stricken. And Jeremiah 48. Jeremiah 48. Verses 26 on to verse 29. Isaiah, Jeremiah 48. 26 on to 29. Make him drunken, for he magnifieth himself against the Lord. Mm. Moab also shall wallow in his vomit, and he also shall be in derision. For was not Israel a derision unto thee? Was he found among thieves? For since thou spakest of him, thou skippest for joy. O ye that dwell in Moab, leave the cities, and dwell in the rock, and be like the dove that maketh her nest in the sides of the hole's mouth. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is exceeding proud. His loftiness and his arrogancy, and his pride and the haughtiness of his heart. Remember uh, 1 Peter, chapter 2, 19 and 20? Hmm? What brings about being trodden down or casting down? Trodden down, being pressed down. Hmm? Doing something the Lord's way or going against the Lord and doing it your own way? Hmm. Isaiah now, 28, 16 on to 22. And interesting, this is talking about, in uh, verse 1, Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim. Hmm. Verse 16, on to verse 22. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone. 
a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, line upon line, precept upon precept. And isn't it interesting that this is the very chapter where that appears? Wow. Okay. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. And the water shall overflow at the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. For the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night. And it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it. And the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gabeon. That he may do his work, his strange work. And bring, his, bring to pass his act. His strange act. Now therefore be not mockers. Lest your bands be made strong. Mm. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption even determined upon the whole earth. God's judgment is coming. See, we the body of Christ, we're going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. And then God's judgment is going to come in the form of Jacob's trouble, that seven year time period. And... Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. The longer you go, the longer you reject the Lord, the harder it's going to be for you. We have a video somewhere on the channel here where we talk about that. That the farther you get away from the Lord, the harder it's going to be to go to Him. The older you get. Old and Foolish King. That's what the video was. That will be in the description box if I can remember. Okay? The impossible is possible with God. But see, lest your bands be made strong. By who? By yourself. Interesting. Yes? Isaiah 63, verses 17 on to verse 19. Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways, and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servant's sake, the tribes of thine inheritance. Why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? The Lord doesn't do that. But when you make the decision to go contrary to him, and he hands you over to that, that's what that's a reference on to. The people of thy holiness have possessed it. But a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Oh, haven't they done that today? We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. Very interesting. That which is Christianity today, they were not called by thy name. Think about that. What the faith that was once delivered on to the saints was called the way. Okay? The way. All right? Interesting. Micah, Micah 7, talk about being trodden down. Micah 
Micah 7, verses 5 on to verse 10. Like I've told you, like I told you, uh, recently I myself have been trodden down and cast down. What the world would call depressed. And see, you got Christianity that says, well, that's a problem in you, that you're depressed. Well, it, you could, it could be because of a consequence of something you have done. Like doing it the Lord's way or doing it your own way. Interesting, huh? Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the door of doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. That's a reference on to the helpmeet. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter riseth up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. You know, when an enemy reproaches you, you can just turn off the computer, turn off the phone, go away. But when it's coming from within your own domicile, from within your own structure, from within that own little thing, that little egg of yours, when it hits you from close at home. If an enemy had reproached me, then I could have borne. But it was thou, a man mine equal. We took sweet counsel together and walked in company to the house of God. It, it's a different thing. And I have experience with this where people who I thought were brethren, turned out that they weren't, some that turned out to be absolutely insane, all of a sudden get turned. And, you've ha and you had sweet counsel together. And they turn, it's like, then you, you know, the, fa the facade is taken off. It's like, you never were my brother in the first place. Nor were you my sister in the first place. Verse 7. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. When father and mother discard me, the Lord will take me up. I know it doesn't say discard. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Even though sometimes we think that he doesn't. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. And what is that? Um... Uh, what is that? That's Proverbs 26. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him because of thine indignation and thy wrath. Until he plead my cause, and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Verse 10. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it. And who is this she? Personally, I believe that's a good reference onto Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Rome, Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, which is everyone's enemy. Rome is everyone's enemy. 
even the even more so to those who follow her. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Check your reference if you got any. Uh, is there a reference for uh, Revelation 18 uh, out of verse 10 there? I doubt it, but... Hmm? Revelation 18, talking about the destruction of Rome. Luke 8. Notice, too, that the references that we see for trodden down all happen before the death, burial, and resurrection. Isn't that interesting? Because we see here in Luke 8, verses 4 on to verse 11, uh, 4 on to verse 8, excuse me. Luke 8, 4 on to verse 8. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it, trodden down, pressed as a cart, pressed unto you as a cart full of sheaths. Trodden down down. Trodden down. I've been feeling very trodden down and cast down. More on that in a little bit. Let's continue. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture wasn't nourished. You know, someone hears something that closely resembles truth from a Christian, and then they go to a phallus house, and then, they're withered, then they wither away because they get no sustenance, no sincere milk of the word, or no watering from the word. Right. Lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. And the thorn sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. 11 on the verse 15 now. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. Hmm. Yea, hath God said. They on the rock are they which, which when they hear receive the word with joy. Yes. And these have no root. Why is that? Because it lacks moisture. See, Christianity offers you a shot in the arm. But see, it wants to keep you in a state of infancy without growing. <coughs> Makes you dependent on men. Not the sincere milk of the word. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation, fall away. There's another falling away for you, Mr. Fig. Anyway. 
And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. That verse 14 is a little bit more indicative for most of us saints than we like to imagine. Because you gotta, yeah, yeah, right? You gotta, you gotta pay them bills. Hmm? You gotta pay them bills. You gotta play a roof over your head. You got that, you know, unless, uh, unless you built it yourself. And then, and even, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, well, I own the, pro I own everything. I own the house and the property. It's like, okay, you think you own it? Stop paying taxes on it and see what happens. Well, I own that house and I own the land, okay? But you got to pay taxes on it, right? Stop paying that stuff and see what see where your ownership really lies. And they which fell among oh, we already read that, but let's read it again. And they which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and choke and go forth and are choked with, the, with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good grain are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit with <laughs> And also, too, in Luke 21, we see a place where they, uh, they that a lot of these, you know, um, Luke 21, oh, one, one, one second. Sorry about that. Luke 21, I was thinking of something else. Luke 21, verses 20 on to verse 24. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. This is, taught, this is also a reference onto the time of Jacob's trouble. Luke 21, he's referencing that. Okay. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, the seven-year period is a time of God's vengeance on the earth. Okay? That all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Mm. Trodden down. Trodden down. Being trodden down is a result of what? It could be several things actually. You doing, you doing what you're supposed to do by God according to the word, and then you suffer for it. You go in contrary to the word of God, and you suffer for it. Something with your a physical ailment of some sort, and you're being persecuted because of it. Okay? But see, being trodden down, walked over, forced, pressed down, cast down, Cast down. In Exodus chapter 7. Cat now cast and down, not the first appearances. But in this cast down, check this out. I found this very interesting. Cast down. Exodus 7 verses 8 on to verse 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Shew a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it 
before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. Mm -hmm. For they cast down every man his rod. And they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Truth always swallow up Aaron. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And the thing about hardening Pharaoh's heart, Pharaoh's heart, uh, Pharaoh already thought that he was God. Pharaoh had already made his decision. Pharaoh had already passed the point where he was never going to return. So the Lord just led him along in that thing of his. Okay, that's what that means. I found that very interesting about casting down. When brethren are cast down, depressed, I, I'm, I'm finding it difficult, especially with how the Lord led and guided in this, showing this to me with what I've uh, been going through recently myself. And also, what the press is, but yet the scripture is my standard. Um, I, I, I'm having difficulty using the word depressed or depression to describe being cast down, to being trodden down. I, I'm having difficulty doing that. But Psalm 37, verses 1 on verse 9. Fret not. And the fret video will be in the description box. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Oh, when you're cast down, brother, sister, and that, that scoundrel, Satan, he'll, he'll go ahead and, you know, this is a tablet, and he'll, he'll try to divert you. And when you got one of these accursed things, it's really easy to do. It's really easy to do. Some of you are being are remembering about just how easy it is. That's why sometimes you got to put it away. Put it in another room. You know that front room of yours? Put it on the charger. Put it in the dresser. Shut the door and go away from it for a while. Anyway. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. And there is none good but who? God. And there is nothing good but what? His word. So how do we do good? Do what the scripture says. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. By the sincere milk of the word, that bread of life, and also actually with like rice and your beans or whatever. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Heretics like to say, well, like to take this and try to twist it, saying that, okay, you, you know, trust in the Lord that he's going to give you a Mercedes Benz. Lord, our Lord abhors the covetous. Okay? And you read 1 John chapter 5. If our desires coincide with what he desires, that's how that works. Okay? Watch out for these wicked Pentecostals who preach that stuff. Okay? And verse 5 kind of already explains verse 4. 
Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noon day. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. And those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And skip to verses 23 on to verse 28. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. How is our steps ordered by the Lord? By the scriptures. Reading, following the scriptures. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Save people fall. False converts, lost people, fall away, Mr. Fig. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And that is, uh, what was it? Uh, Psalm 24, I believe that is. Psalm 24, what do I, oh no, Proverbs 24. Hold on, hold on. I, I think I said it uh, the wrong Gave you the wrong address. Proverbs 24, verse 16. There it is, not 26. So, uh, Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Hmm. Though he fall. He shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Interesting. Verse 24, Proverbs 24. Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Depart from evil, which is understanding. And do good, according to Scripture. And dwell forevermore. Interesting. Now, let's read some Psalms. When, when brethren are cast down, I always recommend to brethren, read the Psalms within the 40s. Like Psalm, uh, Psalm 40 through uh, 50. The Psalms within the 40s. Okay. Psalm 42. And when we are cast down, when we are trodden down, when we are filled with sorrow, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Anytime you want to get me out of here is good for good by me. Let's go. You and I, we wanted out yesterday. But we're here. My tears have been my meat day and night. Well, they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise. With the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down? O my soul. 
And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill Mizhar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water sprouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet, look at, look at that verse, verse 7. Deep calleth on to deep at the noise of thy water sprouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Because hmm. of thine indignation and thy wrath. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? <clears throat> Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. His mercies are new every morning. And we're going to look at that, I think, somewhere in here. Okay? Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me. My prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, in my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Psalm 43. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. Amen. Judge me. If we would judge ourselves we would not be condemned with the wicked. And see, because we judge ourselves according to the perfect standard, that means I have every right to judge you according to the same standard that I judge myself. And see, I don't live up to the standard. But see, we have today and we strive to do so. And because I fail daily, that does not take away from the fact that as I judge myself, I am required to be a fruit inspector. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Judge me, O God. Look at that verse. Verse 1 and 2 there. He's like, okay, judge me, God. Why, why is this happening to me? Why are these things happening to me? Why? You really want to know? He'll tell you. He'll tell you. Do you really want to know? See, that's the thing. Some of you, you, you don't want to know. Or you know, you just don't want to, you just don't want to hear it, do you? Oh, trying to talk to someone who doesn't want to hear it. Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me onto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacle. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Be merciful unto me, O God, 
for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God will I praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Yeah, don't fret men. Don't fret men. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall I escape by iniquity? In thine anger, cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God I will praise his word. In the Lord I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. And the wages of sin is death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Falling. Just may I fall seven times and rise up again. But the wicked, lost people, fall away. They fall in mischief. Jeremiah chapter 6. And, and our, our beloved brother, who I um, have not spoken to for a while, had personal issues to deal with, uh, did a beautiful video on um, Jeremiah 6, where he touched on certain things. We're going to touch on it here ourselves. Jeremiah 6, verses 13 and seven, on to 17. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Psalm 10. Read Psalm 10 about what the Lord thinks about covetous. About the covetous. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Christianity. They'll give you a shot in the arm, but then you die of thirst because you get no nourishment from the milk of the word or, or being washed in water of the word. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down. You 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 look on that you, on this YouTube at some of the stuff that is being pushed. Can people blush anymore? You know what I've noticed where people actually will blush is when you bring up truth to them about calling evil evil and calling good, good. See, because today, evil is good and good is evil. But as a saint, when you say that evil is evil and good is good, that's when you make these people blush. If you notice that. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, and not the old paths Baptist church from that nut job. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your, for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. They made a choice. 
Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. And what do they do? They trod, they trodden you down. Jeremiah 8, the natural progression of this, verses 8 on verse 12. How do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Well, certainly, in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. I like that verse because where it's coming from, it's showing that the people who say that the law, you know, it's vain because it's man's word, not God's word. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected, see, and verse 9 shows that. They have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Well, the pen of the scribes is in vain. The man's wisdom, philosophy, earthly, sensual, devilish. And see, when you're cast down, long comes that devil. Long comes that devil trying to uh, confuse you, trying to uh, turn your attention away. Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness, from the prophet even unto the priest. Every one dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, said the Lord. You and I as saints, we can easily be cast down when we behold the deeds of the wicked. When every day, if you're checking your health phone or your emails and you get this nonsense, not from brethren, but from people, Look at verses 18 on to verse 22. Check this out. When would I, when I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart, my heart faint, my heart is faint in me. Behold the voice and the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in the far, in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion, is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? The harvest is past, the summer is ended. We are not saved. See, when you read Isaiah 53, that kindredness that the Lord experienced in death, in being tempted even though he never sinned. And what was tempted of the Lord? This. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold of me. And of course, these wicked uh, black Hebrew Israelites will cherry pick. It's like, ah, see, God's black. The Lord rebuke you. Isn't that evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? Shemitic, not Hamitic. Okay? The Lord rebuke you. Anyway. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. Verses 1 and 12. Here we're touching on the deeper thing of it. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, and you read, continue to read, 
in chapter 5, what ministry do we all have? The ministry of reconciliation. As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. <laughs> and how do you handle the word of God deceitfully? Simple, by not rightly dividing it. When you don't rightly divide the word of truth and try to blend everything doctrinally together, you make a mess of things. Then you become like Mark the Messenger, and you become like almost every single solitary, sleazy, believist, fake gracer out there on earth. You become a Catholic. You become a Calvinist. Okay? But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, Mm -hmm. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, who's the God of this world? Well, that'd be Satan. Allotted to, for judgment's sake. Okay? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. Your servants, not servant of myself. <clears throat> for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. Day star. Okay? To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have the Lord dwelling within us permanently until the redemption of the purchased possession, of course. Then we go to be with the Father. Okay? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, a pearl of great price. We have the Father living within us as saints permanently. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. But we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. And this is what has been happening to me recently. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. What does that mean? Dying to ourselves that we may live according to the standards that are given to us in Scripture, which we can't do. <laughs> you read Romans 7. You read Romans 8. But that doesn't mean that we don't strive to do so. Okay? Remember that, my dear brother. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, death to self, but life in you. Second Corinthians 7, 6 unto 11. Six, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 6, on to verse 11. Nevertheless, God, that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. And we addressed this in a video last week. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. 
but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you. See, godly sorrow is a two-edged sword. It leads on to repentance not to be repented of, but it also, when you mess up, what carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourselves. You're, you mess up, you want to get right with the Lord. Yea, what indignation. Yea, what fear. Shimon the sorcerer. When Peter's like, dude, you're not saved. What did Shimon the sorcerer say to Peter? You pray for me. If that man were saved, he would have been, he himself would have gone to the Lord himself. Okay? That's in Acts chapter 8. You know, we addressed that last week. Okay, one of the things that these idiots, these uh, fake gracers like to, you know, Shimon the sorcerer was saved. No, he wasn't. But anyway. Yea, what vehement desire to be right with the Lord. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. See, one thing we lack, and when the Lord puts his finger on that godly sorrow that's in us, when we've messed up, it's like, oh boy. Not that we're saved and being saved again because we go to the Lord on his terms, he saves us. We're once saved, always saved. But see, we sin. We sin. And when we are known to our sin, okay? All right? Psalm 118. Psalm 118. It's really easy to be cast down, to be trodden down. It really is. When, um, when bills mount up and then things start to fall apart and just every day is a struggle. Man. It's like you don't even want to wake up. Your only hope and solace is Scripture, the Lord himself. You walk out the door and it's like, what barrage, what attack am I going to get today? It's like, wow. You search yourself and you, you know, you walk softly and yet still it comes. Psalm 118, verses 6 on to verse 18. And you saints... I know, I know so many of you get cast down. You're lonely. You're dealing with the sin. You're dealing with poor health. Okay? Whatever it is. Okay? Brethren, I recently have been going through some major stuff. Major. Major. And to those of you, brethren that are in that little nucleus of the little thing that we do, the email thing. Thank you for those of you brethren who have prayed. Lord has answered your prayers. And I know that the people that I, I personally converse with, I know you pray. I know you do. But see, it's easy for us to be trodden down, to be cast down. It's really easy. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. And right here, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And you got to remember, Satan is all about flesh. When you are cast down, the last thing you need to do, the last thing you want to do, is put yourself here, put yourself on this computer, 
because it's quick. No, excuse me. It's speedy. Speedy. Swipe up, swipe up, swipe sideways, right? It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Verse 8. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. You know, recently with everything that's been going on, it's like, it's been pretty severe. It's been very severe around here. Um, and I have learned when you are facing, when I am facing such assault, pull away. It's not a, you know, the Lord has called me to a position, yes, but see, even we who have been put in a position like this, when we get attacked, when we suffer, we have to take time for to be, you know, to to withdraw and just, hey, you and me, Lord. Okay, let's, okay, what? <laughs> you know? And I'm not telling you saints anything you don't know. But see, Christians, and especially these wicked infiltrators, it's like, well, when you're going through being cast down or feeling trodden down, that's when you need other brethren. And I agree with that to an extent. I do. But when it's a, to the severity that has been lately here in our little thing, you know, the brethren have their own. And yes, you know, uh, you know, any one of my brethren personally. Uh, and praise the Lord, there are brethren, you know, like Brother Alexander, Brother Jeff, you know, dear brother from New Jersey, or brother from Ohio, brother from overseas, you know, brethren overseas, you know, you know, brother from Georgia, you know, <laughs> you know, any one of these brethren, if I personally were to call one of these brethren, it's like, hey brother, I need to talk with you. They would. They would. But see, when it gets to a point where the severity is where you're like, why are, why are you cast down on my soul? That's when I have learned. That's when it's like, okay, I need to pull away. And Lord, you, you and I, for as long as you deem necessary. It's you and me. It's you and me. Let's 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 do this. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to judge myself here. It hurts. But I'm not afraid to do that. You're not afraid to do that, are you? We fear the Lord, but you shouldn't fear judging yourself here. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They can pass me about, yea, they can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They can pass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Look at how from verse 10 on to verse 12. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Compassed. Compassed. Surrounded. Overburdened. Trodden down. Cast down. Pressed down. The weight of the world on your shoulders. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall. 
Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice and rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death, because the wages of sin is death. Limitations, chapter 3, that being com compassed or compassed, whatever you want to say. Here you are, and everything is just like, <laughs> like bees. You ever whack a, bee, uh, a bee's nest or whatever, and then they go around you and try to sting you to death? <laughs> Things have been so horrible around here lately, brethren. And, you know, when you judge yourself, it's like, okay, okay. But even thus, when it still comes, when it still, it doesn't seem to end, all you can do is get on your face and, you know, you're at that bottom and just reach up. It's like, Lord, you know. <laughs> What, what can you do? See, that, that, it, see, that, that is an aspect, that is a key ingredient in a saint. See, someone in self-righteousness will, will go here, there, and there, it's like, I can try this, I'll do it. A saint, you get to that point where, whatever it is, and it's like, what am I going to do? Okay, what can I do? Like what it's like Peter's like, where else are we gonna go? What else can I do? If there's something I can do, show me. I'll do it. Otherwise, I know I can't. So I'm just gonna hang on to you, Lord, until these calamities be overpassed. See, someone who saves themselves by their own belief, someone who is part of <laughs> the church that uh, Satan founded, you know. Someone who's elect because they're um, <laughs> whatever. You know. they, they go into themselves to f try to find something. But see, the saint is a totally different aspect. It's like in Psalm 102, uh, verse 12. But thou, O Lord. From verse 1 on to verse 11, it's all me, me, I, I, I. Drowning in pronouns, personal pronouns, until you get to verse 12 in Psalm 102. But thou, o Lord. Lamentations 3, 22 on to verse 36. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Usually Christians will stop at verse 23. Sometimes they'll go to verse 24. Sometimes. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And usually when, you know, Christians in the buildings like to go to Lamentations and quote this, they usually never, It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it upon him. 
He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled with reproach. Meaning, he accepts the punishment, the chastisement, as it were. Remember what we looked at in Leviticus 26? Different dispensation. <laughs> and you got these Christians being told and teaching people that it's like, well, you're not going to receive any, uh, any recompense at all. Stay away from Christianity. It's not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. Yes, the Lord delighteth in mercy. Yes, he does. The Lord would much rather be merciful. Amen, amen. But when you mess around with the creator of heaven and earth, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you play games with the Lord, okay? He delighteth in mercy. But when you start doing things contrary, you want to act as your own God. We make lousy... Dude... Haven't you figured this out by yet that you make a bad God? You make a lousy God to no good and evil? Haven't you figured that out yet? You, hey, you sleazy believers. You are your own God. You save yourself. Haven't you figured it out? Of course not. Of course you haven't figured it out. Of course you haven't. Because you're so good, because you saved yourself. You have been broken. Look at this. To crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approveth not. But then again, you encompass the entirety of the Book of Lamentations. You know, the Lord, uh, I forget where it's at. I think it's in Ezekiel, uh, where the Lord, he says, like, you'll, you'll see that I am not acting out of not being provoked. It's like, okay, you guys have provoked me for a long time. The Lord is patient. The Lord is long-suffering. But see, there will, come a ch there will come a time when the Lord will reach his end. Meaning, you can, oh wow, read the book of Lamentations sometime. When I tell brethren who talk to me who are dealing with sin, like temptation, you, you read this book of Lamentations. Sit your butt down, take the hour or whatever, read the whole book slowly. Consider that he was doing that to the apple of his eye. Different dispensation, yes, but regardless, the apple of his eye, he did that to Israel. You think that you're going to get away scot free? Oh, that's right, because God loves you. He's not angry at you. If you have a God who doesn't get angry, then you don't have the right God. You have a God that gets angry at those who talk about the true God. You can try the Lord's patience. You can try His long-suffering. Like I said, read the Book of Lamentations. Better to err on the side of caution than presumptuously going on thinking that, well, God, you know, it's okay. Don't worry about it. 
Yeah, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it. You just believe and receive. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Verses 10 on to verse 15. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. For our light afflictions. See, the thing that we need to remember and what we can easily lose track of is that eternal mindset. We can get so focused on the thorns and snares, thorns and briars, excuse me. We can get so focused on the things down here that sometimes we can lose. The boisterous wind, we can lose focus. We can lose that that sight for a moment on the eternal mindset. In a hundred years, who's going to care? <laughs> As we're seeing demonstrated, in twenty years, who's going to care? Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Ooh, thank you. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. Having teeth, thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. Romans chapter 5. The beloved Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Verses 3 on to verse 11. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation, come on, say it, worketh patience. <laughs> and patience, experience. And experience hope. And who is our hope? And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is spread abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us when he saves us. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, which cleanseth away our sins, we shall be saved from wrath through him. God's wrath, the time of Jacob's trouble. For if when we were enemies, lost, were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. 
And you and I as saints, we have received that atonement, obviously. Romans 12. Romans 12, verses 9 on to verse 21. Close in the chapter. Saints. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. We are to abhor. You have hate. You have despise. You have loathe. You have abhor. Abhor. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Abhor is we are to extremely hate that which is evil. Therefore I hate every false way. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. I prefer my own. You know, I, I, I'm not going to go to the devil <laughs> to be comforted. I, I'm going to the Lord. And if I'm going to be, have fellowship, it's going to be with a brother or a sister. My wife will be present if it's a sister. You know, of course, obviously. obviously. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient. <laughs> In tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, continuing. See, people will confuse repetitious prayer that the Lord speaks about with continuing instant in prayer. Remember, dear brethren, what the Lord talks about is, Hail Mary, full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the loom. Okay? That's the kind of, um, they think they will be heard for their much speaking. Repetitive prayer. He's addressing prayers like the Hail Mary. The, uh, like the, 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 the missal. The missal. M-I-S-A-L. Right there. With all these predetermined, predescribed, pre-prescribed prayers of the Vatican. That's what the Lord is addressing. The Lord is not addressing or saying anything against you going to the Lord, continuing instant in prayer. Okay? I, I have prayed for several brethren for months, the same thing. Same thing. Okay? That's not vain repetition like the heathen. The vain repetition of the heathen that our Lord is talking about is the Hail Mary full of grace. Those types of prayers. The prayers that come to you from the Vatican. The prayers that you get in the synagogues. Okay? Those. Not something that is organic. Not something that is relational. Praying for a dear brother who you've prayed for for months. The same thing. It's like, Lord, you did, please, please, today rescue our dear brother from himself. Rescue our dear brother from this situation. You know? Our Lord's not against that. Be very cautious. Always remember, when when someone, when you start thinking, brother, about, well, that's vain. Are you saying the Hail Mary? Are you praying Catholic prayers? Well, no. Then shut up. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's like the thing with the unpardonable sin. You don't need to worry about that today. Okay? 
unless you're doing the Hail Mary and then calling it a day, uh, don't worry about vain repetition. Okay? Distributing to the necessity of saints. Necessity. Given the hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. How do you bless those who persecute you? Demonstrating, showing truth. How do you love your enemies? By giving them truth, by demonstrating them truth. That's how. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense with an S. There's a difference. Webster botches this. God don't. Okay? Recompense with the C is used differently in Scripture than recompense with an S. One's a, uh, one's a verb, the other one's a noun. Okay? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. How do you feed him? Scripture. If he thirst, give him drink. Sincere milk of the word, washed in the water of the word. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And there is none good but who? 1 Corinthians 10. Verses 1 on to verse 14. And we'll be done. This isn't probably what you were expecting on something where we're, where you're talking about this subject. Probably wasn't what you were expecting at all. <laughs> well. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, Oh, oh, one one moment. Did I write down the right thing? Okay. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses, context, that's identification, in the cloud and in the sea. And all did eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink of the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual capital R rock that followed them, and that capital R rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things as they also were. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer, complaining, whining. Writing that one down, because got video on that. Now, all these things happened unto them for in samples. I love that, in samples. 
and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. And a just man falleth seven times and riseth, riseth up again. Mr. Fick. While fake lost people like yourself fall away. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. God is faith, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Go through it. Deal with it. Go to the Lord. He will hold your hand as you go through it. As we already addressed in Isaiah. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from my idolatry. Because what happens? Sometimes you can revert to yourself and when doing that you might be tempted to find comfort from the devil. That's going to be it for this video. Um, hopefully this has been informative. Hopefully this will help. It's up to the Lord. Thank you to those of you brethren who have prayed. Thank you. The, the stuff that's been going on lately has been atrocious. Just absolutely atrocious. But anyway, I'm going to get this video uploaded. Thank you for watching this if you do. Love you. And thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.